So, there can be a lot to remember out on the battlefield of Total War, and some mistakes are certainly excusable. But some are not. I see many newer or inexperienced players simply barreling their army forward all into the back of each other and just stacking them up so that there's just one big blobby line of mess engaged with the enemy's blobby line of mess. No tactics, no thinking, just rushing in blindly. Let us take a look at some examples of this tomfoolery. So here I am as the chaos in a 2v2, the greenskins are coming at me. Now there's a small force on my left flank, all I've got over here is summoners of rage and warhounds to defend myself, two units. The enemy's coming around with four units. He's got two units of orc boar boys and two units of spider riders. He decides to send some orc boys and spider riders into my summoners of rage. So that's two of his four units tying up two of mine. His other two units have the opportunity to come up behind the rest of my army and flank the crap out of them. But instead, he decides to charge all four of these units into the summoners of rage, stacking four units into one of mine as the warhounds have gone. Now this is just a bad idea anyway because Summoners of Rage will eat cavalry for breakfast, but the point is he had such a big opportunity to flank and so much room to flank, he could come up behind all my infantry and just hammer and anvil the crap out of them as much as he wanted. But as you saw, he just stacked all his units and blobbed them up in my Summoners of Rage, when he had all the opportunities to flank around with them. This one in a free for all, we've got the High Elves preparing to fight the Tomb Kings here, and as you'll see, there's a lot of Tomb Kings coming this way in a bit of a column formation, all charging towards some High Elf Spearmen, who are just about to form up. And there's two units here, both in good health. There's some Skeleton Spearmen coming, and a lot of good units in here. There's some Kepra Guard, some Tomb Guard in there, lots of Spearmen, some Halberds. So a couple of powerful units in there that could really do some damage. But oh no, let's just select the entire army and give a single right click, and watch this shitty game of Tetris unfold. So you'll see everything just stack into the back of each other like some mindless zombie horde. And this is really going to get you nowhere. And this is eight Tomb Kings units fighting two units of High Elf Spearmen. That is a tremendous advantage for the High Elves. And if that wasn't ridiculous enough, there's tons of room to flank on both sides of this little front line of the High Elves. You could have brought tons of these units around the back and disrupted all the missiles which are going to be causing him problems. And the other thing about this is that these units won't actually be fighting most of them. These Kepra Guard would absolutely destroy these High Elf Spearmen, but they can't even get near them because there's so many Skeleton Spearmen in the way. So instead, you're left with a grindy Spearman on Spearman fight, while the High Elf Archers have their way with the rest of your army. At no point in any battle is 8 units versus 2 a good thing. And one more here, I'm the Greenskins fighting the Lizardmen. I've got some Savage Orc Biggins and Black Orcs engaging some Saurus Spears. And to the left, there's two units of Temple Guard coming this way, a strong unit who could really do some damage to my two units. Now probably the best idea here is send one unit in to fight the Black Orcs and flank around with the other one. But oh no, let's just barrel these two very expensive units right next to each other, straight into a unit that'll do a lot of damage to them. And also these Saurus Spears, one of them could have gone to account for these Orc Boar Boys that are coming up behind them. So he's got the numbers advantage in this engagement, four units to my two, but he's barreled them all into my two when he could flank around and get behind us or simply go after some other units in my army. But honestly, the biggest danger of this sort of thing is not the wasted resources or the missed opportunities, but the vulnerability to being blown up. Like so. This foot of Gork just dropped half health off both of these very expensive units that this guy put right next to each other. You are basically asking for it when you blob up. So hopefully these examples give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So, be sure to ask yourself, what am I doing with my front line? Am I one of these people that's blobbing up units and just charging them in without really thinking about what I'm doing? This sort of play isn't going to get you anywhere, you don't really need to think about matchups, you're not trying any tactics, this can be achieved with two clicks of your mouse. Two clicks and you can get this. Even my gran could pull this kind of play off. So, use your brain and do some freaking flanking man. Of course the opportunity isn't always going to be there, and you may need to put in some work to flank, but that more often than not is a better idea than trying to stack everything up. The only benefit to stacking units up is that there'll be a unit there to take the place of the first one that falls. Which, don't get me wrong, can be a tactic in itself, but this is more addressing those who just charge their army forward without thinking. Now if we actually look at the units we've got here, we've got some speedy forsaken, some anti-large chaos halberds, and some almighty chosen with great weapons. And the front line is just chaos warriors. Now if we look at where we can actually apply these units well, you can do a lot more with them. The Chosen are going after the Kepra Guard, who are the strongest unit on this front line as the rest are just Tomb Guard. 
The Forsaken, being the fastest unit we've got, are going to take that flanking role and come around the back of the front line. And then these Halberds don't need to do anything just yet. They can stay at the back and just protect from any flanking units, cavalry, monsters. They're there ready to assist where needed. Maybe one of the Chaos Warriors is going to start losing and then they can go and assist and stack into the back of them. But for the most part in this one, Chaos Warriors will beat the Tomb Guard. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of what you should be doing rather than just two clicks and hope for the best. Don't get me wrong, two clicks and hope for the best can sometimes work maybe against the AI or a lesser player and you're not really learning anything or practicing anything, you're just mashing buttons like a chimp at a keyboard. The other thing is that once your units are engaged, don't be afraid to swap them round. You especially want to be doing this if they're in a bad matchup. But in this one, I'm going to pull the Chaos Warriors back so that the Chosen can destroy the Kepra Guard. And then I can use those Chaos Warriors for something else. So hopefully from these examples, you can see what kind of player you are and what you might need to work on. So be sure to not let your front line or any parts of your army clump up into a blob that can easily be destroyed by one single magic spell or that waste the resources of all of those units. And by no means am I trying to make this sound like an easy thing to do. It is going to require a lot of micromanagement, of focus, and of awareness of what you're doing. It's going to happen to everyone from time to time. You may let a few units get clumped up, but don't be afraid to pull some out and send them off somewhere else. It was never going to be easy, but hey, welcome to Total War. And also realize that flanking opportunities do often present themselves. Even the smallest of gaps can be a flanking chance potentially. So keep an eye out for them. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.